Kathleen Flanagan. And I'm going to open with a poem that you may hear more than once today. Uh, this is a poem by William Stafford called The Ritual to Read to Each Other. This is a poem I come to again and again when I need to be sort of counseled about the human condition and on those occasions when I feel like I'm sort of passively involved and I need to be reminded not to be. A ritual to read to each other. If you don't know the kind of person I am, and I don't know the kind of person you are, a pattern that others made may prevail in the world, and following the wrong God home, we may miss our star. For there is many a small betrayal in the mind, a shrug that lets the fragile sequence break, sending with shouts the horrible errors of childhood, storming out to play through the broken dike. And as elephants parade holding each elephant's tail, but if one wanders, the circus won't find the park. I call it cruel, and maybe the root of all cruelty, to know what occurs, but not recognize the fact. And so I appeal to a voice, to something shadowy, a remote, important region in all who talk. Though we could fool each other, we should consider, lest the parade of our mutual life get lost in the dark. For it is important that awake people be awake, or a breaking line may discourage them back to sleep. The signals we give, yes or no, or maybe, should be clear. The darkness around us is deep. That's a poem I have to read over and over. This is a poem by um, my teacher, Sharon Bryan, and it was written for her friend, Richard Blessing. It's called Abracadabra. A man was dying, slowly at first, he said. Then the river he was riding divided. He went one way, everyone else went the other. Soon for him, there was nothing but darkness and pain. He was adamant about that, no welcoming light. Then he began to fall. It was the feeling that yanks us back from the edge of sleep. But not him, not this time. He kept on dropping for what seemed like forever. Just the twist in the pit of his stomach to tell him he was still alive, still falling, until finally there was something else a little trickle at the back of his mind, a notion that might slow him if only he could get hold of it. What he needed was a word, a particular word, but none came to him for another long time. Then one began to take shape. The pain was even worse at first, but he wasn't falling as fast, and then at long, long last, he stopped. This was just the beginning of coming back. He had to feel his way up the well, he seemed to have fallen down, lifting his entire weight every inch with his fingertips. It took hours or days, he couldn't tell which. And the word that had made it possible was hope. When he came to that part of the story, we were embarrassed. We looked at each other and not at him. It was too obvious, too sentimental, a sign of weakness in a strong man. We chalked it up to his illness. Well, what did he care about irony and narrative distance? He knew he'd sat up in bed, asked for his shoes, and taken his son to a movie, Conan the Barbarian. He lived another year on that one word plucked from thin air. <laughs> 